we had went over how to create a composite and merge two images into one okay so I was able to get a, a clean area on the top of baby's head we still need to remove the distractions in this image so I'll be showing you how to do that very easily in Photoshop um, and the first thing we're going to do is work on uh, a duplicate layer of the background I don't like to work on the background layer just because if I do make a mistake, it's really hard to go back and change that later on sometimes. Um, so to do this, I'm going to go to Layer and Duplicate Layer, and we'll select, uh, we'll just name it uh, back, back Top. Okay. Um, and also, I do want to mention that I do go in and remove distractions uh, if that's needed in a photo before I apply any overall enhancements. So I'm going to select uh, a color from the backdrop that's kind of the, the midpoint. Notice how there's some darks here towards the edges. It gets brighter in the middle. I'm just going to select something right in between uh, with my color dropper tool. If you don't see it, just right click in your tools panel and select it. Notice how the color is now at the foreground in my uh, color panel. I'm going to select my brush. Again, if you don't see it, just right click and select brush tool. My opacity is at 100%, and I'm just going to start painting this on to my image. Since the colors aren't um, quite the same throughout the entire backdrop, I'm just painting this on the, um, the, the entire backdrop here. Now, if you make a mistake, like right there, I'm painting over part of the handle. Um, that's also a super simple fix. You just want to add a layer mask. Okay, so I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment, or not new adjustment layer, layer mask. Um, we'll do reveal all. With layer masks, white reveals and black conceals. So if I want to conceal something I just painted, I'm going to reset my colors by clicking on the two small squares at the top of your color panel. And um, use the arrow to bring black to the foreground color. My brush is still selected. So I can simply go in and paint over the part of the handle that I had just covered. Super simple working with layer masks. Now I'm gonna click back on my original layer. Um, use my paintbrush tool. And I'm going to keep painting now we're going to have to extend the, the basket handle so that it, it does uh, cover, so that we can fill in this little spot where mom's hand was. Okay, so essentially you want to zoom in and take a little bit more time than I am. Um, just for time purposes, I'm just really... Um, painting in as close as I can to the edge of the, the basket handle here. And baby's head. And I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Okay, there we go. So I've got some really nice clean edges around baby and around the top of the, the basket handle. At this point, we do want to fill in this gap here where the basket handle was. Let me show you what I mean here. I'm going to flatten, layer, flatten. Okay, so I'm going to drag this down to the little square with the folded corner at the bottom of my layers panel to create a copy. And uh, again, we'll use a layer mask. Layer, new adjustment layer or I'm sorry, I did it again. Uh, layer mask and we'll hide all this time. I'm gonna bring white to my foreground color because white reveals, I've got my brush selected and I'm just going to brush it over part of the handle here. I'm gonna grab my move tool and notice how just that part of the handle is um, showing. Oops. 
Okay, so I could just keep um, playing around with this, move it a little bit to match up. So I'm going to press enter and click on, um, and actually I'm going to layer flatten. Okay, if I want, I can duplicate my layer a little bit and just to kind of um, soften the transition from this light highlighted piece to the dark part of the handle, I could also grab my brush or the actually the color picker tool again and click on an area. Um, let's go ahead and click on the dark area of the handle. Select the brush, bring the opacity down only to about 50%. Again, you'll want to zoom in. I'm just real quick going over this here. That's still a little dark. I'm going to edit, undo. Let's go down to about 20%. And I'm just going to kind of fade that in um, with the rest of the, the handle. Now I kind of went outside of the lines and got that on the backdrop. So again, that's where layer masks are your best friend. Bring black to the foreground color and just paint over a little bit to conceal. Um, and again, you can adjust the opacity when doing this as well. Okay, so we're just going to keep that as is. Um, let me go ahead and zoom out just a, a little bit. Okay, so next I'm going to work on the flocati, and then I'm going to just add a little bit of a, a haze to the middle here so we don't see the, the crease between the backdrop and the flocati rug. Okay, so let's go ahead and layer flatten again. I'm going to duplicate my image so I can go over to layer, duplicate. So notice there's the two ways you can go in and duplicate your background layer, depending on what's easiest for you. I'm going to name this one Flocati. I usually don't rename my layers, but I'm just doing this for the tutorial. Um, so now I'm going to essentially bring this, this clean side on the right uh, hand side of the image and flip it over to the left side so I can get that really nice uh, look of the Flocati. Um, but we'll only be revealing the Flocati and not the rest of the image. So I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. Okay, so again, this I don't want this to be applied to the entire image. So I am going to use my layer mask by clicking on the, the rectangle with the circle in the middle. Again, there's two ways to do that. I've showed you how to go to layer and new uh, layer mask as well. Um, by default, the layer mask is white. I'm going to press Control I to invert it and fill it with black. I'm going to grab my brush and bring white to the foreground color because black conceals and white reveals. My opacity is at 100%. Okay, and notice how the beautiful Flocati rug is being revealed. I'm about to run into my basket here. Notice I paint a little bit further to the right, the basket's starting to come in. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of cloning here. Okay, so I'm going to layer, flatten again, duplicate my layer. I'm going to grab my clone tool. I like to, this is kind of a large area, so um, I'm going to be sampling from different parts of my image that have the, the same color tone. I'm not going to sample from the outside uh, or the corners because those tend to get a little bit darker uh, in my images. And again, you're going to want to zoom in and just make sure the edges are nice and clean. I'm going to zoom through this just for time purposes. But notice how I keep resampling. You don't want to sample just from one area and copy and paste the entire um, thing because then it actually does look like you picked up one part of the image and put it somewhere else, um, if that makes sense. 
but uh, what I'm doing is just all clicking to sample an area and then I'm painting over. Okay. You can even make your brush smaller and lower the opacity just to kind of blend that in a little bit. All right, so I'm liking that. Again, I'm going to layer flatten, and I'm going to make a duplicate layer. My last step is just to erase this black line or little crease in between my Flocati rug and the black drop. So I'm going to use my eyedropper tool again. I really like the lightness and the creaminess of the Flocati rug, so I'm going to use that color to blend. Okay, We're going to go back to the brush and switch the opacity. I usually like to start around 45% with a large brush, um, and I'll paint over the crease. I'm just going to go back over that a few times. Okay, It's not completely done. I'm going to bring my brush up to 64% and make my brush smaller. There we go. Okay, and that's looking really nice. There's still a few things that I can do to go in and touch up, but essentially um, this is a super simple way to go in and delete distractions from your background. Um, this is specifically helpful when you are using uh, some sort of a paper backdrop uh, as I had in this image. So I really, really hope this helped you guys um, just kind of figure out how to uh, deal with distractions. Um, this, uh, again, really works great for studio work. Obviously, if you're outdoors, you can't really paste that in, and you're going to be doing a lot more cloning than I had done here. But we'll see. Uh, if you guys like, I can do a tutorial on that as well. Just go ahead and comment below, and um, I'll see what I can whip up for you guys. All right, thanks so much for tuning in, and uh, I hope you are enjoying and learning much from my videos.